Mr. Pugh, over the last 30 to 50 years, has the environment gotten cleaner in the United States of America? Uh, yes. Yes, it has. Yes, sir. It has gotten cleaner. Um, Ms. Reams, has the environment gotten cleaner the last 30 to 50 years? Yes, we have record low emissions. Um, uh, Mr. Pugh, is China building more coal plants? I have no direct knowledge of that. <laughs> Mr. Jenkins, do you know? Yes. Um, how many coal plants are they building? Do, do, do you have somewhat, some knowledge of that? <clears throat> a lot more than the United States. Ms. Reams? Yeah, it's at least a dozen a year. China is building at least a dozen coal plants a year. Yes, sir. Where do those emissions go over the course of time? They're called global emissions, sir. And the prevailing winds are they're, they're, to the east? They're blowing to the east, yes, sir. You know, I was just up in Alaska um, with Representative Stauber, and it was interesting. When we were flying with the governor, um, uh, we had a beautiful day, but we could see there were a few clouds in the sky, but we could also see some, some grayness that was on the horizon. And I asked the governor what that is, and he said, it's probably pollution from Asia. Ms. Reams, do, does this, this bill that we're considering here, getting an initial look at, do they weaken numeric standards? No, this, this is on process. The, the bill that we're talking about is on process. So it doesn't reduce um, or, or it doesn't increase numeric standards that you could put out greater amounts of emissions. Is that accurate? It has nothing to do with, with emissions, sir. So, but it does have to do with timelines, right? Indeed, and also I think focus as well. There are a number, we've been talking about the, the need to have oversight, but there's a number of cases where we've seen abuse. For instance, there's a Supreme Court case that's now going to be considered, and it's about a railroad building in Utah, but it's been sued based on emissions coming from Louisiana. So we've got Utah and Louisiana emissions. Could that have been foreseeable? I think we need to rein in what we're looking at. This is an example where we do need rail to supplant moving back and forth in the communities in Utah where the state government has deemed they need that. They have their own environmental laws and they're being superseded by the federal government because of emissions in Louisiana. So for those that may be geographically challenged, are Utah and Louisiana neighboring states? Louisiana is in the southeast <laughs> and uh, Utah is uh, at least 2,000 miles away. So they're quite a ways yeah, apart. Yes, sir. Yeah, okay. Um, I'm just gonna take the final minute here. Gentle lady from New Mexico chastised us in regards to input. Well, I would urge you to go back and look at the record over the last few months as the Alaskan tribes, tribes have been shouldered to the side by the Biden-Harris administration and said, we're not going to take input from you. In fact, we heard from those tribes. In fact, we heard from one of those tribes as a result of the discovery of gas and oil in Alaska, they now live 13 years longer because they can afford to have a clinic in their community way up there on the North Slope, which I found out a few weeks ago is a long ways from a major city like Anchorage. And she went on to say that you're going to tank the economy. We're going to tank the economy? Have you taken a look at the data that's out there? Have you talked to the American people what's going on? Food, fuel, everything is up double digits, many of it 20 to 50%, and even cheese curds. Cheese curds in Wisconsin are up 50%. That's what's going on. Tank the economy? I think we've seen it already, and we've been watching that show for three and a half years, and the American people are tired of it.